The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is a title that I adore. Yes, it's a bit different from other Zelda games, but different isn't bad. I like different. Hell, I'm different, and I think it's an amazing game that unfortunately is overlooked far too often, or at least I think so. But did you know that Majora's Mask was born out of a lack of will to work on Ocarina of Time's would-be expansion, Ura Zelda? Well, today on Gaming Mysteries, I'll be talking about the beta of Majora's Mask. Now, as I stated, Majora's Mask was basically born out of a lack of will to work on Ura Zelda. During the development of Ura Zelda, the person in charge of Ocarina of Time's dungeon designs, Aonuma? Well, that's his name, assuming I didn't butcher it, which happens a lot, but Aonuma felt that Ura Zelda wasn't a very progressive title, Ura Zelda being the unreleased expansion for Ocarina of Time. It's been labeled by Miyamoto as a parody of Ocarina of Time, and it was to boast remixed dungeons, which we saw in Master Quest, but also new quests, new dungeons, and a slew of other rumored goodness. Now, Aonuma didn't think they could call the finished product Ura Zelda a new Zelda title, which I understand, but... If I'm to understand correctly, it wasn't really supposed to be its own standalone title. It was supposed to be an add-on, so it's to be expected that it might not be the most progressive thing ever. Either way, I guess he just wasn't into it, but he still wanted to create a new Zelda game. So Aonuma bargained with Miyamoto that if he could make a new Zelda game within a year, that they wouldn't have to make Ura Zelda. For whatever reason, I find that hilarious, but I guess we can see how that turned out. Granted. The 64 disk drive didn't exactly blow up in popularity so much as it blew up. The new Zelda title we would see would be then known as Zelda Gaiden, which translates into Side Story, and it's said that the title held 64 disk drive origins, that it at one point was to take full advantage of the hardware, in particular the internal clock, as it's said that in the game's early stages, while it allegedly still took advantage of the 64DD, that there were seven days in the game instead of three. Now, if that's true, and forgive my natural tendency to be wary of for goddamn everything, but that would have been the bestest use of an internal clock ever. I imagine it would be like playing Animal Crossing. Except you could stab your neighbors. I'd buy that game. Hey, Miyamoto, hey, hey. I think I know what your first project should be when you quote unquote retire to your new position. Think about it. Of course, regardless of whether or not the title made use of the 64DD, that thing eventually fell into a dark abyss called Obscurity slash eBay for a ridiculous amount of money, and the new Zelda title would see a cartridge release instead, with a new name, Majora's Mask. The reasoning behind changing the name was to, quote, reinvent the game. And so, now we move on to the beta of Majora's Mask, and there's a lot of little differences between the various early versions of Majora's Mask compared to its final release. Now while a lot of these differences are merely aesthetic, I still think it's pretty cool. The first thing I have to bring up is that in an early screenshot, you can see Skull Kid and the moon. But the moon isn't trying to haunt my dreams. Yes, the moon is lacking its awful, terrifying, child-crushing face. But I have to say, as much as I hated the moon's evil stupid face, it really doesn't scream, hey guys, I'm a threat, and I'm gonna kill you in three days, without the face. So now that we have the evil moon out of the way, as you can see by the early footage and some early pics, quite a few areas look very different and some aren't even in the final product. Stone Tower's layout in particular is very different, and some walls have, let's say, interesting design choices. Nothing I would choose. Certain item icons are also different. For example, it shows you having the Kokiri sword, and at another point, the fairy bow. There's some removed cinemas, and two other interesting things I found were that early on in development, there was going to be a fishing mini game to earn rupees, which is cool, I guess. And at some other stage development, there's a quote from Miyamoto saying, You will be able to buy time using rupees. There will be a merchant who sells time. Now this is interesting, because I'd buy some time. It would certainly make me a lot less paranoid, and I could really use some help with that, Nintendo. Work with me. I found it interesting that with a Game Shark, you can find that the Sun Song was maybe originally going to be in Majora's Mask. Maybe. And you'll also find the Wind and Ice Medallions, or their icon thingies, though apparently they had nothing to do with Majora's Mask and were merely leftovers within the game. There's also this little wallet thing that may be a beta version of your wallet or a quest item. Your guess is as good as mine. 
Of course, the coolest thing I saw in all this stuff was the adult's mask, which was replaced with the Fierce Deity's mask in the final version. This mask would essentially serve the purpose of allowing you to change into Adult Link. Go figure, huh? Now, that sounded like it would have been an awesome idea, but this idea was scrapped because it was ultimately deemed a little pointless. Because, unlike an Ocarina of Time where Young Link wouldn't be able to use, let's say, a bow, for example, because... I don't know. But he can use that bow in Majora's Mask, so it does kind of make the adult mask seem a little useless outside of just looking really cool. Oh, and having pants. Can't save the world without pants. But props to you if you do save the world without pants. I, I applaud that. Good for you. But that's all I have to say about the beta of Majora's Mask. It's kind of funny to think that if Urizelda had been completed, we may not have seen Majora's Mask. Well, maybe. I don't actually know. I don't really work at Nintendo, you know? In any case, most of the changes made from the beta to final release are minimal, and the finished product is nothing short of sexy. Sexy? Yeah, sexy. Yeah, I said it. Sexy. It's sexy. This has been Gaming Mysteries. Thanks for watching. Pretty sexy episode.